So now I am very curious about this. Have you worked directly with Pyak Ingles? Because we have seen him in videos and his talks. But what is he like in the office? Subscribe to Bless Dark for your dose of art, architecture, and design, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Hey yo guys, welcome back to Bless Dark and firstly, wish you a very merry Christmas. Now, as most of you already know, today in this video, we are discussing Big or the Bia Kingles group. But let me tell you who we are discussing it with. Today we have with us Oliver. Now, Oliver graduated back in 2009 from Oxford Brookes University. He has since been working in various organizations. In 2015, he joined Front Inc, where he took up the role of a facade consultant and computational specialist. In 2018, he then switched to Big, and today at Big in the New York office, he's a senior BIM specialist. So with him, we are going to explore what his job is, what a facade consultant means, what is Big like, what is Bjarg Ingels himself like. All of these are coming up in the video. So without further ado, let's get started. So hey, Oli, how are you? Very good, thanks. How's it going over there? Uh, it's going good. It's it's so good to connect with you. I know we've been trying to schedule it for a while now, and it's so good to finally talk to you. Yeah, no, I'm super super excited to talk. Um, it's really great to see platforms like your own just can continue to grow, and uh, I think it's really interesting to see this this generation of uh, Aki Aki podcasts and Aki talks. Like I think it's a it's a really interesting thing, and I'm excited to see it continue to grow. Thank you so much. All right, so uh, I've already created a lot of hype around our interview through Instagram, through my YouTube channels. I've already told and uh, told people in the introduction what to expect from this talk. So uh, without ke uh, keeping you waiting, without keeping the audience waiting, I want to dive right in. I've already given them an introduction about uh, your university life, what you went through beyond that. I, I want to start our discussion from March 2015. So when you started working at Front Inc. as a facade consultant and a computation designer. So talk to me about your job there and specifically about this post of a facade consultant. What does it include? Yeah, so um, before joining Front, I was working at IDAS and I was like uh, very much, you know, a typical architect designer. Uh, working on really fast-paced products and competitions. And I was kind of like the, the grasshopper guy, I guess you could say, in the team that was, you know, working on designs and scripts. And a lot of my time was spent um, working on facades because that's where a lot of your energy goes. Um, and I, get, I got to a point where I was kind of creating these, these ideas and I felt like, I didn't really know how to properly detail them and like um, actually see how they're fabricated and constructed. And um, so I was really interested in kind of learning more about facades in general, but also computational design. And I went to, I was always interested in kind of, you know, pushing my computational design side. And I was kind of like, thinking about, you know, whether I should do a master's or, you know, a specific course. And I didn't really feel like it was worth uh, the money, which is, of course, the, the tricky thing. So I went to Smart Geometry, which was a conference that was all about, you know, computational design and, you know, emerging technologies. And I met uh, the guys at Front who were running the cluster that I was in. And I learned about what they do. So Front is, was a facade consultant where... Um, they presented all their projects and they were working on a bunch of my favorite projects. Uh, but they also had a specialty about them that they were very dig digitally driven and they had like a computational kind of group. And they also went beyond the typical role of a facade consultant and started to produce fabrication information to actually build these things. So I thought that was super interesting. And I basically kind of met the guys. I learned a little bit about their plugin, which is called Elefront, um, which basically plugin for Grasshopper that allows you to translate your Rhino model into a BIM model. Essentially, you can embed geometry into it. A few months later, I kind of pestered them for, for a job. And then uh, a few months after that, this Morpheus Hotel project came by. It was through that or because of that project, I got hired to help out with it. And it was a really unique project because they were hired directly by the contractor 
to actually work out how to design a system and fabricate the exoskeleton cladding of the building. So um, if you're familiar with the building, it's, it's kind of got this very free form center to it where it's almost like these three holes have been punched through the building in a kind of very Maya type, uh, type form. And the cladding for the exoskeleton is uh, very unique because every panel is either single or double curved. It's every panel is unique um, and it's an array of infinite different configurations. So the contractor was like struggling to work out how to even model it and, and work out the system to it. And um, Front was hired to, to do that. And so we developed this workflow using Rhino and Grasshopper where we kind of scripted the entire thing using the Elephant plugin and Grasshopper to generate this super detailed 3D BIM model. And then once we generated that, we reverse the process and create all the fabrication tickets for every single um, piece that's needed to be fabricated to make the cladding. So like every fastener, and we're talking about li literally millions of unique parts, which then go to a factory and get built. That was my kind of introduction to, to Front, and I worked on that product for a good year and a half and two years. And then uh, I continued to work on, on other projects um, as, you know, both typical facade consultant role and uh, the computational stuff as well. But um, essentially, you know, as a facade consultant, what you're doing is you're working with, typically you're working with the architect to uh, develop the facade in more detail. And, um, and that could be from, of course, very detailed drawings um, of the facade and, you know, connections and things like that to um, specifications for glass and researching different uh, suppliers and like different materials and things like that um, all the way to also thinking about how does the facade go together and how do you actually the construction sequence and things like that so it was a, it was a really great experience I, I never set out to be I was never like a super uh, facade kind of guy, um, but I thought it was really interesting and I learned a lot about how to actually build things, but most importantly, how to build things with uh, computation. So that actually sounds uh, really, really exciting. So you worked at Front Inc. for more than three years, after which in 2018, you joined Big. So talk to me about how did you end up at Big? Yeah, so... Um, like I said, I was working for Front for a few years and I felt like, um, you know, after some time as a consultant, I'd learned a lot of really interesting stuff, but I, I wanted to head back into architecture practice. You know, I still not lost that uh, architect slash designer side of me. And so I started to look at, at going back into practice and bringing some of this knowledge that I've, I've kind of learned with me. Um, and so it was an interesting time. I was really thinking, okay, um, what firms would I really, really love to work for? Um, and Big, I'll be honest, Big was, was top of my list. Um, it's a firm that I always admired. I felt very connected with the work they were doing, which, um, you know, connected with my own interest in design and philosophy, which I think is super important. You often see a lot of people um, just joining firms because they're well known or something like that. But um, I felt like it was, you know, I was really interested in what they're doing. So I went in and I came in for a general interview and, and talked to some of the, um, a couple of the associates of Big and we got to chat, chatting. And then shortly after that, there was uh, a position in the BIM team. And so uh, I thought, oh, that could be really interesting. And I had a chat with the BIM manager, who's uh, or the BIM director now, Jan Lechnik here in New York. So yeah, in 2018, I, uh, I accepted a job and what came back to America. I was in London at the time. And uh, yeah, I've been a big for just over two years now. And yeah, it's been, been, a, good, uh, been a good role. So uh, you work there as a senior BIM specialist, right? So what does that entail? What, what is your job like on, on a project basis? Like what all do you supervise? Yeah, so my, like I said, my day-to-day -day role is, is almost like a in-house BIM consultant. So I work on multiple projects at any one time. 
Um, and I stay with those projects and you kind of have one foot in the team and one foot out. So um, I'm helping teams that have gone past concept stage into the more detailed stages of design, and which is where we'll transfer the project from, from Rhino, Rhino into Revit. And I will help out from anything from teaching Revit in-house and teaching the team Revit to helping them with day-to-day -day challenges just as they they build the model and continue to develop it. Um, and then I'll also take care of maybe some of the more advanced workflows, helping them build complex families, uh, you know, generating the facade or any kind of complex, more complex computational workflow. So I'm kind of, yeah, I, I'm based in the BIM team, but, uh, and, and that's very much on a project by projects kind of basis. But at the same time, I'm also working on a practice level where I spend some time looking at technologies and methodologies that uh, I think will add to the unique design process of BIG. Um, for example, right now, one of the things I'm working with is augmented reality and virtual reality in the office, and I'm testing out plugins um, and things like the HoloLens, which I have in the background there, and hopefully we'll, we'll talk about as well, which is a super interesting technology, which I think is, is really going to change the way that we are able to connect with the act of making and also communicate our ideas. Um, of course, VR is, is kind of very much ingrained into uh, the way we work already, but augmented reality is, is like a couple steps behind it and we're seeing some, some really interesting stuff, being able to uh, look at your Rhino model like in augmented reality next to you, but also on the whilst you're modeling and you can interact with grasshopper scripts and stuff. So there's some really interesting stuff going on there. So I think essentially I see myself as a kind of in-house design technology consultant. Anything, you know, I'm really interested in the intersection of design and technology, um, you know, tools that we as architects use, uh, you know, tools that we use on a day-to-day -day basis in our design process. Um, and also how emerging technology is incorporated and influences the design itself. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the best way to describe what I do is just a kind of in-house tech consultant in a way. So now I am very curious about this. Have you worked directly with Pierre Kingles? Because we have seen him in videos and his talks, but what is he like in the office? So uh, Bjarke is like, a, he's a great character. You see him in the office, um, you know, very often. Bjarke is, of course, the face of the company. He's like, you know, it's literally his name's on the door. And he is the, the leading design partner, right? So he's constantly involved with, I think he's involved with, with every single project. He knows every single project goes in. And he's interacting with the design teams very often for, you know, big deadlines and updates and things like that. So he's very much uh, ingrained in the design process. No, I mean, Bjarke is a, he's a super nice guy. I think that's that's one of the things that I um, was kind of pleased to actually hear when I came into the office. You always hear about these, these uh, the heads of the office being like this Darth Vader type character that walks around, <laughs> walks around the office. But he's actually, he's super nice. Uh, he'll just chat to you if you're kind of um, at the coffee, at the coffee machine and things like that. Um, but he's re he's also real really a inspirer as well. He gives like great talks in the office about what we're doing, where we're going, um, and of course you know you see that in his in his presentations in public and things like that. So that's really what I think is uh, his he he brings to the office right. Is he's that he's he's kind of leading the direction and he's kind of inspiring us to work towards this this goal. Um, could you give us an overall experience of how the office and the people are at the firm? Yeah, I think, like I said, the, the, the secret source to BIG is that they've just created this super creative environment uh, of, of really amazing people. I think um, Elon Musk talks about a company is just like a group of people that you, you know, bring together with a shared goal or a shared goal uh, of an idea or some kind of end, end result. Um, and the, the key thing is to attract the best talents into your, into your company. I think that's really what BIG uh, does very well. 
Um, but and, and in doing so, it's it's a great place to work. It's um, it's really great people, really nice people, very talented people. Um, yes, you work hard, of course, um, but we're all working on things that are interesting and pushing new ideas. Um, and they do also really invest in in their employees, and you know we'll have uh, you know really interesting holiday parties, talks, people that come in and talk. We also do a lot of sharing of knowledge. So we have these things called big schools where someone will present something that they are kind of uh, have a bit of knowledge on. So I may give a big school on computation, but someone else may give a big school on landscape design and someone else may give a big school on um, urban farming or something like that. So we're also like, it's really encouraged to share our own knowledge within the company because that's also something that you see is like uh, you get pockets of knowledge in, in companies and um, it's sometimes not so well communicated between them so I think that's the, that's one thing that's really interesting we're you know we're also presenting the work between each other quite often so we know what's going on if we're not working on that project most people have you know understood what's going on so yeah I think it's a it's a really great place to work as um, you know, pleasantly supply, surprised to to kind of confirm that when I joined Big. So um, yeah, no, it's it's a great environment of, of really nice people uh, and very talented people. That sounds great. I mean, you hear for a lot of uh, I mean firms, you also hear that you know, obviously the work is amazing. That is what mainly draws you to that place. But then people are, I mean, the work environment may be not as great and they uh, feel as if, you know, this is not a great place or an encouraging place to work. So it's always amazing to hear that, you know, uh, when places encourage people, encourage people to interact, to sort of uh, brew ideas together. I think that sort of generates the best output from people as well. So um, only for the last few months, you've also started to teach. So uh, what actually got you into teaching online and do you have something coming up, uh, going on right now or coming up in the future as well? Yeah, like I said, I think it's, um, <clears throat> I'm really passionate and interested to kind of teach uh, architects computational tools and, and technology in general. Um, I think there's a bit of a gap between, you know, there's a gap in the market where um, where you're able to learn from professionals who are actually using tools uh, in practice and also to actually build things. So that's that's one area I'm really interested in, and especially, you know, uh, I've been teaching initially about Rhino Inside uh, because I think that's a great tool to help us streamline the design process from design to documentation. So again, it's, it's kind of more about how can, how can we become more efficient architects? So yeah, and we're also seeing, you know, I'm, I see a lot of courses and computational uh, tutorials on how to create really uh, extravagant geometry and things like that. But I, I don't often see it being directly applicable in practice. So I've been teaching with um, Think Parametric recently, which was a really great experience um, where we were, we were really early on releasing a course on Rhino Inside because it was a, um, a new kind of plugin that we'd been using at Big and it was, you know it's a, it's a great uh, tool when in the morning when I first downloaded it and started playing with it I had already implemented it on a project by the afternoon and then I've also been uh, collaborating with liveacademy.tv where there's a whole host of <clears throat> really interesting tutors there um, really looking at computational tools from a design perspective but I've also been uh, teaching Rhino inside there and looking at how we can use it in the very early stages like bringing a, a transforming a mass uh, into a form design using Rhino and Revit at the same time. So that one, we're really kind of experimenting with, um, you know, bleeding that boundary between concept and documentation in the early stages. Um, I'm working on a lot of courses in the background right now. And so uh, we should have some more news uh, and some things very soon for next year, some, some more courses. And I think I'll expand on on uh, the tools and platforms that, that so far I've been teaching. 
so that's pretty cool you can send me the links i mean whenever anything is coming up and you can send me the links and i'll put them in the description below and you guys can go check it out as well i often i'll post anything on my instagram you can you can follow me on uh, on instagram and i usually post anything that's upcoming you also see a bit of behind the scenes of what i'm working on and technologies and stuff i'm playing with so uh, tune in there and you'll be able to see anything that's uh, coming up in the future perfect you can find all his instagram and other areas wherever you can contact him down below as well in the description and yeah what i really find interesting is is when you said that so when the initial design team of the concept stage is done at rhino and then you sort of help them transition to revit it's like like we use it regardless of whether a client asks us to use it because uh it's part of our design process it speeds up our design process um when we talk about the future of design how big a role do you think technology has in it it has actually been a very very insightful conversation and also about uh whatever courses that you've done i think usually also people just start one course and go on there but i see you going on different different tangents and all of them so amazing so i think uh, all of those skill sets are also something maybe that we can explore in a future video as well yeah for sure there's 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 so much more we can talk about and uh i think there'll be some some interesting stuff coming next year for sure but uh thank you so much for having me i've i've really enjoyed uh, our discussion and uh yeah i'm super Super excited to see your your platform continue to grow and and uh, I'm sure we'll do another talk in the future. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ali. And that was it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed that video because I enjoyed making it. Now this was the last video of 2020. Don't worry, there'll be some amazing stuff. This is just for five days left. There'll be some amazing stuff coming up in the new year. I already have it planned. But I will tell you about all of that in due time. Before we go on. I would just like to thank each and every one of you for all your support for everything that you've done for all the videos that you enjoyed all the comments that you have shared they mean a lot I would once again tell you if you would like to support this channel if you would like what I'm doing here and would like me to continue doing it and have the means to support it please do so through Patreon you can find link in the description below and yes on Patreon you can find the rest of this conversation as well and that was it Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share this video and subscribe to Blessed Up for more such dope content. I will see you guys next year for more videos. Bye bye.